this is SNN. And we're coming at you live once again from the banks of the River Styx. I don't know what's going on with it. It's been looking like lava the whole time. I heard it looked like water. I heard we'd see a boatman called Charon. It's crazy. We're going to be here through... What's this? Through October 31st. We're going to be here through Halloween for all of... The, and please, yeah, turn, the, turn all the lights on. There we go. We've been having some problems with some Stygian mosquitoes here, and it's I'm getting some skin irritation, and it's, it's, yeah. Anyway, a sunspot group has suddenly formed. It's quite sizable. Let's get rid of the SNM. Thank you. And, uh, yeah, it's um, suddenly formed. It's instantly beta class. It's released a bunch of B-class flares. We've got a huge... Uh, plethora of electrons, um, all kinds of crazy storms happening, volcanoes and earthquakes all happening, and uh, it should be an interesting <laughs> an interesting program. Uh, so here's the 94 Angstrom's view, and you can see right here, that will most definitely be named a sunspot. There's no way those umbrae are going to go away that quickly. So before we get to some Helio Viewer movies, and we've got a bunch of custom ones here for you, before we get to that, and again, we are streaming live, let's go out to Lagrange 5 because there's also a plume of plasma, kind of shaped like that, visible from Stereo A. And despite the fact that this thing is kind of pointed to the south of where the Earth would be, which would be out on the ecliptic plane, uh, that could still release a coronal mass ejection. There's also one on the other side of the sun, and often we do see uh, the sun releasing coronal mass ejections in both directions at the same time. So that's something to keep an eye on, and when I say eye on, well, the pun is intentional. So here are our custom Helio Viewer movies. Allow me to get off the screen here. There we go. And let me just check the life of the stream. All right, they're perfect. Now it's perfect. And let's look at some close-ups of that sunspot. Here are the magnetic fields, and you can see them pushing apart from each other. Uh, so while doing so without shrinking very much, that would increase the probability of solar flares and coronal mass ejections. And that plume of plasma is probably being suspended by the field of this sunspot. It's very hard to tell because of things like opacity, the amount of opaqueness associated with looking at a very bright object. Here's the 304 Angstrom's view of that new sunspot group. And it's quite significant. There are some solar flares that you can see happening there, those brightening events. And you can see a bunch of potential field force lines there in the UV emission spectra of ionized helium, 304 Angstrom's. Here's the 171 Angstrom's usually my personal favorite, and once again, it's quite spectacular. Not a huge sunspot yet, but there's a lot of space between those umbrae, and they've been moving apart, as you could see in that first image of the magnetic fields. The radio flux of the 10.7 centimeter variety is popped right back up to 74. There are the charts of the last two solar cycles, both in sunspot number progression and radio flux. We're currently in a state of geomagnetic unrest here, as we've got a massive number of electrons. There are about six times the warning level of electrons out there right now in the Van Allen belts, as well as uh, an increased solar wind speed. We did see some additional spikes here, and it's a prolonged coronal hole wind stream. So at the same time, we see some X-ray flux happening here see a series of low-level B-class flares over the past 24 hours. No big proton strike events, and that's one of the most important things that we keep an eye on. And once again, yes, ions. All right, I'm going to reappear. Looking at the real-time solar wind, we see a shifty phi angle, and you see that regularly when you see an incoming coronal hole wind stream. Solar wind density, around 5.7 protons. Solar wind velocity, 
554 having come off of a new recent high. It got made it all the way up to just over 600 there just a few hours ago. And you can see some spikes here on the uh, Geospace Magnetosphere movie as well. There you can see that sudden little increase there in the pressure associated with that increase in velocity. And we'll actually show the velocity here after we look at ground magnetic perturbations. We'll give that a chance to load and show you what's going on on Earth. And we see significant perturbations here over parts of Antarctica, not so much where the pole is, which is over here. And the Earth starting to look like a tic-tac-toe board as we've got two North Poles, the Net Pole somewhere over here, and uh, they could be in the process of doing some crazy geomagnetic flips, or they could be in the process of going back to more normal positions or deciding new poles, who knows? Leave us a comment if you have a theory as to how the Earth's geomagnetic field is generated. It's one of the most significant mysteries in science, period. And if you think I think it's because of a galactic current sheet, think again, that's not a thing experienced in this solar system. <laughs> uh, I wonder if that will cause any controversy in the comments section. <laughs> anyway, there's that little velocity spike. And you can see some pretty high readings here on the ghost magnetometer. Higher highs and higher lows, actually, in the past couple of days. Again, we've got a massive amount of electrons out there in the Van Allen belts. Here's what's going on in the heliosphere. It's the heliospheric current sheet polarity diagram, the top view ecliptic plane field plot. I hope that's enough big words for you. By the way, I don't intentionally compose sentences with huge words in them to make myself sound sophisticated. I tell you, Stygia is a weird place. If you've ever done a live stream like we do here at the Smash News Network from the banks of the River Styx, you would probably agree. And getting back to the heliosphere, here's the line of sight field plot, which shows you the B field in blue. And whatever you do, don't go to Stygia without a gold piece. I expect us, by the way, to remain in the North Pole current sheet for an extended period barring some rising action coming over the eastern limb of the sun. I don't really see any evidence of that there. I expect to remain in the North Pole current sheet, shown here in green. And again, here's the B field shown in blue. We don't see any major yanks in that yet. And when I say yanks, I mean magnetic yanks, causing this to become pulled down toward the sunspot, ultimately. Here's a field plot of just the solar corona. It shows you open potential field force lines in black. You're sort of inside those ones coming out of the North Pole right now in some respects as it's charging up the current sheet that you're in. Also, we've got coronal hole potential field force lines in purple and closed potential field force lines in pink. And it's time to move on to another edition of the Smash Lights where we chill at the banks of the River Styx and we talk about whatever we want at massive personal risk and expense and for very little pay. Let's talk cosmology. The first segment shall be a cosmology segment. Please leave a comment if you have cosmology subjects you'd like covered. We may cover it on the forums. We may cover it on the videos. Who knows? Deneb, the most bright the brightest intrinsic object visible from the Earth solar system in the galaxy. So it's, uh, it's also a celestial pole star, sort of at the other end of the precessional cycle of the Earth's axial wobble. And uh, yeah, it's, this is a great article telling you about how visible this is, when it sets, uh, when it's at zenith and so on, and uh, how it's visible from the southern hemisphere as uh, Deneb spends the entire year circling Polaris. And so it's part of the Summer Triangle also, along with uh, Vega and Altair. 
if you want to read about that, if you want to read more about that, head to smashamash.com slash forum in our cosmology forum. We're going to compile lots of information about that particular object, not only because it's interesting from a cosmology perspective, but apparently it was revered by ancient human civilizations worldwide. In other words, it has a lot to teach cosmologists about the nature and origin of relativistic jets, massive binary stellar systems, poloidal fields, perspective, cosmic rays, and the relationship between infrared, radio, x-ray, and other wavelengths versus outburst activity, emission versus absorption spectra, and lots more. The distance to this object is vastly contested. Some people think it's 3,000 light years. Other people think it's nearly 40,000 light years. Here are the transients of that particular object, by the way, Cygnus X3. If you don't know about it, it's a high-mass X-ray binary. You can follow its transients yourself at the Neil Gorel Swift Observatory, which is uh, monitoring like 1,600 different, oh, not, not that many, about 1,000 X-ray sources for their sudden transient outbursts. And Cygnus X3 is super interesting because it's one of the only known point sources for cosmic rays. As you can see, it's just coming off of its quiescent state here. When it's down on this zero line like it is here, it's in a very deactivated state, and it would be a great time to study this as it goes into a higher energy state, especially in terms of radio frequencies, as this has a radio jet which you live inside of. Let's talk about cosmic ray monitors. As Deneb is able to make to send at least neutrons, apparently, all the way across part of the galaxy and into the Earth. I don't know if you were aware, but that's uh, we won't get into what a cosmic ray is on this. It's the daily space weather. But it may behoove you to understand the relationship between cosmic rays and climate, for example. So here's the Apatite and Barentsburg neutron monitors. And as we're not surprised, we see a ramp down over the past 15 days and a, an overall slight ramp down here at Apatite. Barentsburg showing a slight overall ramp down also of cosmic ray flux. How about Athens, Greece? Is it back? Is it back? Don't, for, don't be surprised if you see a whole bunch of communications outages in the next, uh, in the next uh, day or so, because we're expecting even higher levels of electron flux. So back to neutrons. Here's the Athens neutron monitor. And we see a, a tiny uptrend here over the past 30 days at Athens, although it's been flat over the past 20. Going a little farther south to Mexico City, let's see if this one's back online. Come on, Mexico City! Is it? Could it? Is it? Should it? I, I'm hoping. Come on, I got my fingers crossed. Did I click it? And I think it's still down. Moscow's also down, so we'll look at Olu and DOMC Antarctica. And we are streaming live as we appreciate the tension created by a Stygian live stream. Here is the Olu neutron monitor. You can see it's quite flat over the past 30 days there. And here's DOMC. Flat over the past 30 days there. Monitor these yourself if you, if you don't already. It's a great site. I like it. It's Russian. I don't know if you're scared of Russian sites. Don't view it. And here ends today's cosmology segment. Another common thread at the Smash News Network. Uh, RX July 08984. No, I want. I don't want to become famous. I want to become rich, and that is why I don't purchase subscribers, and and so on. <laughs> nice try, <laughs> nice nice try. Let's get back to Stygia. By the way, if you're not aware, one of the denizens of Stygia is Cerberus, the three-headed dog who guards the gates of Hades. I haven't seen him. If you see him, throw him a biscuit for me. Uh, I don't think he'll bother me because I'm not trying to make it through the gates of Hades uh, in an unauthorized fashion. If you see Charon, let him know. And here's why we have these lights on. It's because of these sycophants. I don't know if you've ever seen a, a Stygian mosquito, but it's not very fun. Plus, if you get bitten by a Stygian mosquito, you could end up with the Crimson Curse, and you could end up with terrible quotes such as, Only the blood will help me now. So I don't know. It's... If you get the Crimson Curse, I, I may be immune because of my white hat status, but if you get the Crimson Curse, you'll start drinking blood, but not directly out of people. You, you'll go to a blood bank and try to hold the place up and steal their blood, and you'll do all kinds of weird stuff, and you'll start acting a little bit like Igor. So here at the Smash News Network, we highly discourage getting bitten by Stygian mosquitoes known as sycophants or being a sycophant. 
and we also discourage being a COVID idiot. So one of the things we talk about regularly is COVID-19, coronavirus, SARS-CoV-2, the virus, the Rona, whatever you are calling it today. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I don't have very much to say, except that you should visit our websites as we've got souvenirs. Today's featured souvenir is the All Things Matter Black. Yes, All Things Matter. All Things Matter. All Things Matter. Condensed Matter Matters. Were you aware? Visit our link, smashamash.org, smashamash.com. Hey, thanks to our Twitch followers. Again, we are streaming live. It's twitch.tv slash smashamash. If you enjoy the content on YouTube, thanks for viewing our live premieres, by the way, to our regs. And thanks to our new subscribers, etc. Please don't forget to share on your social media. Press like and subscribe. Leave a comment. Tell your friends, foes, science noobs, and science pros. Don't forget to branch out into alt tech, such as BitChute. BitChute.com slash Smashamash. We just produced a BitChute exclusive. Banks of the River Sticks BitChute exclusive. Yeah. Were you aware? It's not particularly censored. So if you want to see that one, you'll have to view it on BitChute. It's not even processed yet. That's how fresh off the press that is. All the way. Fo also follow us on Twitter. We've already got over 2,000 tweets. And again, make sure you use the promo code MANSA when you visit the Teespring store. Thanks to everybody who's purchased products. We greatly appreciate that. Also, check out our affiliate link and so on. The shirts are beautiful, by the way. This is actually me. Here, check it out. MANSA! Make America not suck again. It's up to you. And that's nonpartisan, which is why the shirt is purple. Let's talk about a partisan. Oh, man. Have you heard the latest gaffe? This is an article from Law Enforcement Today, which does not appear to be partisan. I don't know. I think they're looking out for law enforcement personnel. Biden claims his campaign assembled, quote, the most extensive voter fraud organization in the history of U.S., end quote. Yeah. Here's a clip. Secondly, we're in a situation where we have put together and you guys did, did it for our administration, the President Obama's administration before this. We have put together, I think, the most extensive and inclusive voter fraud organization in the history of American Paul. Yeah, you heard it. If you don't read law enforcement today, maybe you want to. Let's talk about the 74 things that Trump did in response to the pandemic. As we keep hearing nonsense in the news, complete bias. Oh, Trump didn't do anything. What about declaring a national emergency providing over $442 billion in federal funding to states, territories, and tribes? Legislation securing $8.3 billion for coronavirus response and all kinds of bailout, stimulus, yada, yada, yada. Sending checks to people, inflating the money supply, and being fiscally generally unconservative. So, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with these crazy campaign arguments, but note the list <laughs> the list of 74 things that were done uh, oh yeah all right and again make sure you follow us on alttechminds.com if you set up an account over there you'll see memes like the latest post only only a few minutes ago who votes for these people in the senate and pays them to escalate much less legislate Minds.com slash smash a mash. It's an alternative to Facebook. You won't be censored for putting up a meme about reach around and overreaches. Again, don't forget to apply the promo code MANSA under any Teespring orders. That will, like our broadcast from the River Styx, continue until, well, I guess midnight on Halloween. We're going to be still doing this. And, and uh oh. Oh, man. We we lost power on one of the anti-sycophant lights. Whew. All right. Whew. Anyway, here ends another episode of the Smash Lights. Thanks for tuning in. Let's get back to some data here as I'm getting freaked out at the Smash News Network. Let's talk electrons. There are lots of electrons, and we're back into an electron storm mode here. And here's the one-year chart. You can see lots of electrons out there. We see significant charging hazards. There's where they are located. And we're forecasting an even higher increase. 
we're going to get to even higher levels to where we were last time. So you're going to see we're expecting another wave a little above this past one. Another big time electron storm. Let's keep an eye on the sun and see what happens next. And there you can see the three day chart of the uh, greater than or equal to 2 mega electron volt electron flux. Expecting it to go even higher into warning territory. Yesterday it was about six times the warning levels of uh, 1,000 pulse flux units. Here's a visualization, and we're still seeing some electron anomalies here over North America, but those have... They're largely confined to the equatorial region here. I'll let that play through a second time. Keep in mind this shows the entire atmosphere all the way out to the thermosphere. as your GPS handset has to communicate with a very distant series of satellites. Here's what's going on in the ionosphere, just one slice of the atmosphere, much lower in altitude than the thermosphere, obviously. And here's the latest image. Ionosphere looking pretty normal here. Although there is a bit of a... It's a... Yeah, you... I, 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 don't, I don't know. The Pacific Ocean is getting screwed. Looking at in-the-sky.org to wonder where were you when Deneb set? Have you headed to smashamash.com slash forum? Do you want a free do you want a free shirt with, with Deneb and a diagram of the radio frequencies? Well today's the deadline. If you're not enrolled by midnight, you can't possibly win if you don't sign up at forums. Next looking at the solar system. There's where things will be in a week, as we like to stay ahead of the eight ball. Please leave a comment if you think Frito-Lay is trying to take over the galaxy. So we saw some, some significant earthquakes here, a, a little uptick, as we saw 5.9 at Tonga. I don't think we saw anything over a six magnitude. Let's just scroll up the list. Deep quake at a 4.1 magnitude at Chile. And less than an hour and a half later, a deep quake at Japan. I'm learning about these at the same time you are. Actually, probably only if you're viewing live. Again, thanks to our YouTube and BitChute viewers. Here's a deep quake in the Band AC. Here's a deep quake at north of Japan, northern Japan, actually. That's at over 260 kilometers depth. Another deep quake in Western South America, one of the big time deep quake areas. Another one near the uh, Northern Mariana Islands. Small deep quake in Alaska. So we're still seeing a, we're still seeing a drought of seven, eight and nine magnitude earthquakes, folks. If you're in an earthquake prone zone, have a plan for when building facades start to fall down. Don't be under the ones right outside your evacuation location. And I apologize for not showing that map, or that, or that, or whatever else I missed. I don't even know. It's freaking me out because we're on the banks of the river Styx here, and it's it's a mess. Next, looking at volcanoes, we see Suenose Jima is erupting. It's a 6,000-foot ash plume. Sabankaya Effusive explosive eruption at Pakaya, not not Sabankaya, Pakaya. About a three thousand foot ash plume there. It looks like an effusive explosive eruption at Pakaya. Sangay exploding, flight level two two zero. Revenador exploding, flight level one five zero. Sabankaya exploding, flight level two five zero. And Villarica continues to erupt at moderate sporadic explosions. Please don't attempt to pole vault the caldera. We need the views on YouTube. <laughs> Just kidding, folks. We're paid almost nothing to make these videos. And check out the check out the cold air. There's going to be record snow all over the place if there isn't already. And it's all because of this jet stream. Yowzers. Some Canadian air making it all the way into the Gulf of Mexico, folks. That makes for some cold days and some record setting cold temperatures and snowstorms and so on. 
There's going to be like a significant amount of snow in Texas. We'll get to it. Here are the Eastern World's jets now that we've looked at the West. And here's a snowfall forecast according to windy.com's Euro model. And check it out. Amarillo, just north of you, they're expecting 6.5 inches. Six and a half inches of snow forecasted for Amarillo, Texas. That is a new one on me. And check out all the snow down here, too. Yowzers. That is October 28th, folks. You're not even in November. Now, I remember back in uh, 2010, was it? 2011? 2011, I think it was. 2010? I think it was 2010. We had a Halloween snowstorm of like 14 inches here in eastern Pennsylvania. Uh, but it was not accompanied by an extended period of incredibly cold temperatures. Anyway, let's move on. I don't want to spend too much time talking about snow and snow records. Because I prefer to eat my cherry from a jar instead of picking it myself. All right, so here is the uh, lightning maps on lightningmaps.org, and we see significant lightning here over Texas, Oklahoma. And if you're south of that, if you're anywhere around that, go have a look. There could be sprites. And it's thunder snow. Check it out. There's the Doppler radar map. That is 100% thunder snow, folks. Also some wintry mix falling. If you, if you want to send us photographs, you can text us at 610-963-9799. It's the Smash OVOIP line. Here's what's going on in the cloud layer. I'm over it. Let's take a look at the water vapor map. And you've just got massively cold air here. You've got massively cold air being injected from central Canada. And then you've got a flow of water up here to the northeast, as you can see in the water vapor map. Let's animate this again. To give you the full nationwide view. It's about time to end this stream. I'm getting fatigued. Thanks to our patrons for making me slightly less fatigued. They're our true source of funding. Please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash smashamash. We really do need your support as we've got lots of things to do in 2020 and we simply can't and won't do them without more finance. Without more financial support from you, the viewer. We're paid about two cents per hour to make the videos on YouTube. We make less than $200 per year, if you'd like to know. By the way, thanks for being part of the Smash team. Pardon my vanishing, but sometimes you just gotta vanish because you're in a freaky plane of existence like Stygia and the river Styx looks like lava and it's freaking you out. So again, don't forget to share on your social media. If you wanna win this shirt, go to smashamash.com slash forum. Help us write some parody lyrics as we're looking to do a parody of the Monster Mash, which will be the smash o -Mash, and a parody of Hang On Sloopy, which will be changed to Shut Up Fauci. Fauci came from a grotesque side of town, and critics of the big state tried to put Fauci down. Fauci, we are also a critic of you. So shut up, Fauci, since you took an oath to. And so I say now shut up, Fauci. Fauci, shut up. Well, that was fun. Don't forget to visit the Teespring stores, and if you buy anything on Teespring, don't forget to enter the promo code MANSA on checkout. Congratulations on surviving a global pandemic so far. Again, today's featured shirt is All Things Matter Black. And look for all of that stuff to change starting November 1st. It's all going to be revamped. Some products may vanish, like me. Thanks for flying American Smashways. Once again, coming at you here from the banks of the River Styx at the Smash News Network. We like to shoot on location in extra planar locations as it's more interesting. Keep your head and arms inside the Smash plane here as we've got bonus features. 
We'll show you the 335 Angstrom's 48 hour SDO video. There's the sunspot while I did show prep. We're going to show you it as currently as we can, as it's a live stream. Sunspot 2776 is about to set, as you can see. Barely visible, probably no umbre visible, but lots of umbre here. At least four significant umbre there. So the sunspot number is going to jump way up, as I can count at least four little sunspot areas. And uh, who knows? Who knows how many they'll actually assign that? Uh, that's a uh, that's up to the to the close-up looker bean counter types. And next, looking at 335 angstroms. This is the 48-hour SDO video. You'll see that sunspot form in the second half of the video. It pretty much happened unexpectedly. I wasn't ready for it, were you? But in any case, that's part of the reason why the channel exists. Thanks again for tuning in. Again, please visit the links below the video to support the channel. We'll see you soon. Don't forget to branch out into alt tech. Check out the BitChute channel. There's an exclusive video we just put up there this morning. And see you next time. May that solar wind be at your back.